Hey, good morning, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to thank you guys for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, you know, without you guys, this does not work. So let's get open for business here, and let's wake up the football guys. Wake up, guys. Wake up. It is Saturday morning, and we are 78 days, 10 hours, 27 minutes, and 40 seconds away from kickoff of the Dallas Cowboys versus the L.A. Rams. And, oh, my God, man, I, I am excited because, literally, we're only about a month away from <sighs> training camps opening up. And I, this is it, it's, it's, it's great because we've been missing sports bad. We have been truly missing sports bad. We need something as a distraction. I don't know how they're going to be able to do it. We know that basketball and baseball, those sports are trying to get it together. Um, basketball is having basically an opt-out option for some players if they don't feel like they are ready to get back into the swing of, of basketball and everything. We hope that the teams and the sports and the leagues will be able to find ways that they can have sports without putting people at risk. I, I really and truly hope that we're going to be able to do that. So as we look at this offseason, this 2020 season, that's just been crazy. I mean, let, let's be honest. It's been crazy. <sighs> 2020, I, I, this is one year I will be glad to get rid of. But 2020 has been interesting for the Dallas Cowboys. You could almost say, or at least in my mind, if we went through and we discussed what would be a great offseason for the Dallas Cowboys? What would be the things that you would say we need to do to try and set ourselves up for the future, especially for this season? And what things could we have done to make it better? And you got to look at this from the get-go, even though it was kind of like a slow death for him, but getting rid of Jason Garrett. Getting rid of Jason Garrett, to me, was numero uno. The thing about sports is you only have a finite time to reach, implement a system, get the players, and keep everybody's attention before you get into a rut, before players understand what I got to do to get by, to skate, before you start to get tuned out. And usually that window is five years. Most coaches don't make it past five years unless they're successful. And even ones that have been successful, after a while they get stale. I mean, you could look at Andy Reid with the Philadelphia Eagles. Andy Reid brought more notoriety and brought the Eagles back to heights that they had never been in. They won the division three years in a row. They went to a Super Bowl. Don McNabb tossed his cookies. But those were things that the Eagles in their illustrious history they'd only been to one of the Super Bowl before but they were a consistent winner yet Andy Reid didn't learn how to you know forget how to coach he got stale in there and needed to go elsewhere and went to Kansas City built them held on long enough to get the attention and get that ring where now He's got to refocus. Now, the hard part for them is after winning that Super Bowl is keeping it together because everybody but New England, after winning one, it's hard to maintain that same momentum. We've seen that with, you know, from the Denver's. We've seen that from um, the Eagles. You know, you naturally come back down to earth. So we'll see how Andy Reid does with that. But Jason Garrett, more so even with the fans, became stale. You needed a new identity. You need a different focus. You need something else for teams to have to focus on and worry about what you're going to do. We got stale and we got rid of Jason Garrett and that was a blessing. If for no other fact that we're just changing things up, that we're making players a little bit uncomfortable because you may have known how to get skate by with, with, with Jason Garrett. You don't know how to skate by with all these new guys. You have new people that you have to impress. That, to me, is the biggest off-season move that we've made. The next thing has been, I think, a change of philosophy. Our defensive identity will change. Instead of a 
bend don't break mentality it's going to be a more aggressive it's going to be man on man we're going to man up and we're going to maul you on the defensive line instead of trying to more of finesse and run around people i think that's huge and speaking of huge getting gerald mccoy and don terry poe on that defensive line and going and getting a gallimore that is going to be different. That's going to be an aggressive defense. And you got to look and say, at least on paper, that's going to be a major improvement for this team. I love that. I absolutely, positively love that. And as we continue to look, on the other side of the ball, to lose... Randall Cobb, who was a really good slot receiver, a guy who resurrected his career and have one of the potential stars in the draft literally fall into your lap. Not only have him fall into your lap, to be able to take a playmaker away from your arch nemesis when they thought for sure they had him. Oh, that was perfect. That was perfect. Perfect. You love that. You absolutely positively love that. And as we continue to look at this, you don't, at least in my mind, as I look across the board of the team and talent, we lost, you know, Robert Quinn. We lost Randall Cobb. Um, we lost Byron Jones um, in free agency. We lost to Jason Witten. Um, I'm Malik Collins. We lost some guys that you look at and say they are good, talented people because they got good contracts. They weren't stiffs and bums. But I think the, the one that gives me pause will say Robert Quinn because we don't know what Alden Smith's going to have. We don't know what um, Tyrone Crawford's going to have. We don't know if for sure we're going to have Randy Gregory get back or not. But that's going to be one of those ones that we may take a step back. But I will say the interior of the line, we took a step forward. We don't know with Byron Jones if Diggs is going to be able to step in those shoes and make a difference. But again, that's a change in philosophy. That's going to be a guy who's more of a ball hawk who thinks about getting the ball, who will take more chances than Byron Jones. Byron Jones is going to be, you know, that, that guy that's going to cover real good, but he ain't going to get the ball. The only thing that I would say is really left for this team to take care of, that is to get the quarterback steal done. And I'm not saying that because you're just a Dak Prescott fan. It's not that I'm just a Dak Prescott fan. I am a Dallas Cowboy fan. And I'm a Dallas Cowboy fan that recognizes how you must play the game. We currently have $11.2 million of cap space. $11.2 million. We go ahead and get this deal done, the four years, $35 million now, before Pat Mahomes, before a Deshaun Watson. We create more money now that we can roll over next year. Or if the Jets <laughs> stop trying to pull Herschel Walker trade, want to make a move, and we can figure out something that's you know more feasible than Lyle Collins in a number one, you have room to pay him and still have some cushion. If you don't get that Dak Prescott deal done, well, you could potentially be headed for a Kirk Cousins 2.0 situation where you pay a whole lot of money, he walks, and you get no compensation. And the Redskins are still looking for a quarterback. So as I look at this offseason with one month left to go, I feel good about the direction of the team. It's not perfect by any stretch of imagination, but I feel like this team slowly is inching their way up bit by bit to get back up on top. The last four years, 
are definitely better than the previous four. And in life, you've got to be going in the right direction. And I feel like they are. So we'll see in 78 days if they truly are in the right direction or not. So I hope everybody has a great Saturday. Um, I've got to go. I've got a meeting downtown on this uh, uh, planter box thing that i got to build, custom piece. Um, I had done a model of it to, to show them. Um, they said, do some drawings. It's like, it'll be easy for me to make it. it. It really will be easier for me to make it. So I've got to go meet them and show them. And, of course, I'll be wearing my mask and social distancing and all that. And I hope that each and every one of you guys do the same because the only way we're going to defeat this thing is all of us working together to try and defeat this thing. Hope you guys have a great Saturday, and I will be seeing you throughout the day. Peace.